Paul Atreides is still alive. Deal with this prophet. The prophet? Why is that a bad thing? Use it. Because all my visions lead to horror. <laughs> Your father. Was a weak man. Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with the film Comics Explained. As requested, today we're diving back into Dune with a look at Shadam Carino IV, Emperor of the Known Universe until the rise of Muad'Dib. In this video, we're going to explore his early life, the backstabbing and death that paved the way for his ascension, the Great Spice Wars and the War of Assassins, the rise of House Atreides, and finally, the downfall of the once mighty House Carino. A beginning is a time for taking the most delicate care that the balances are correct. This every sister of the Bene Gesserit knows. To begin your study of the life of Muad'Dib then, take care that you first place him in his time, born in the 57th year of the Padishah Emperor, Shaddam IV and take most special care that you locate Muad'Dib in his place, the planet Arrakis. Do not be deceived by the fact that he was born on Caladan and lived his first 15 years there. Arrakis, the planet known as Dune, is forever his place. Padishah Emperor Shaddam Carino IV, born in the year 10,119 AG, marked the culmination of the Carino lineage as the 81st and final sovereign of the Carino Empire. His tenure commenced in 10,156 AG, characterized by the patricide of his father, Emperor Elrod IX, in collaboration with his confidant, Count Hazimir Fenring. His reign was ultimately eclipsed by Paul Atreides in 10,193 AG, consequent to the Arrakis Revolt, a pivotal moment many historians attribute to Shaddam IV's preoccupation with ceremonial courtly duties and the grandeur of his station. The Emperor's legacy is further distinguished by his bold yet futile attempts to liberate his rule from the influential grasp of the Spacing Guild, the Bene Gesserit, and the powerful conglomerate of Koem. In a strategic alliance with Count Fenring, he spearheaded the ill-fated Project Amalon X, a 20-year endeavor to synthesize an artificial variant of the vital Spice Melange. This venture, nearing fruition, was accompanied by the initiation of the Great Spice War, aimed at annihilating the Melange reserves of the Landsraad's Great Houses, an effort that also met with defeat. Tragedy befell his consort, Anurul, a Bene Gesserit of concealed status, who perished in the same year as the conflict. Following his overthrow, Shaddam IV faced exile to Seleucus Secundus, a planet previously notorious as a penal colony, along with Count Fenring and his progeny, five daughters named Urulan, Chalice, Rugi, Josepha, and Wensikia. In the annals of the Carino Empire, the year 10,119 signaled the birth of Shaddam Carino IV within the resplendent confines of the Imperial Opal Palace on Kaitain. His inception was the result of a complex lineage, being born to Habla, the consort of Emperor Elrod Carino IX, yet conceived from the genetic legacy of Elrod's previous wife, Barbara Matelli. An inconsistency in the Reverend Almanac Enna Scharf erroneously records his birth year as 10,134, a minor blemish in the otherwise meticulous historical account. As the Imperial Crown Prince and the prospective incumbent of the Imperial Golden Lion Throne, young Shaddam cultivated a profound bond with his maternal cousin, Count Hasimir Fenring. The duo orchestrated the elimination of Crown Prince Fafnir Carino, Shaddam's brother, thereby ostensibly clearing his path to ascension. However, the throne remained elusive, and as years passed, Shaddam's youthful zeal and ambition dissipated, much to the chagrin of Fenring, who harbored grand aspirations for both Shaddam and himself. By his mid-thirties, Shaddam had matured into a figure of regal bearing, his physical features, firm chin, prominent aquiline nose, and short, meticulously oiled reddish hair, echoing the imperial visage of his father, as immortalized in the bust from the early years of his father's rule. His appearance was a testament to his heritage and an embodiment of the imperial dignity of his station. In the midst of the 10,150s, Count Hasimir Fenring, harboring towering aspirations for his confidant, Shaddam Carino IV, initiated a series of covert maneuvers. Fenring commenced by establishing an alliance with the Beni Tleilaks, persuading Shaddam to influence his father, Emperor Elrut, to endorse the Tleilaksu conquest of Ix. The underlying objective of this political machination was the clandestine development of synthetic melange, an endeavor later termed Project Amar, following the Tleilaxu's successful usurpation of Ix from House Vernius. With Shaddam's tacit approval, Fenring deployed an Enki catalyst into Elrud's cranial glands during his repose. As Elrud habitually consumed spice beer, the catalyst insidiously transmuted the beverage into a lethal poison. 
Over a span of two years, Elrod succumbed to the toxin, seemingly from natural causes. During the tumultuous period between Elrod's demise and Shaddam's ascension to the throne, the crown prince faced a vehement condemnation from his cousin, Duke Leto Atreides I. The Duke, newly invested with power from Caladan, publicly denounced Shaddam and House Garena before the Landsraad for their failure to defend House Vernius against a Tleilaxu aggression. The situation escalated when Leto, then a teenager and unjustly accused of sabotaging a Tleilaxu freighter, invoked a trial by forfeiture, risking a sentence of death. The Bene Gesserit, deeply invested in the genetic outcome of their clandestine Kwisatz Haderach project, intervened when the potential of Leto fathering a daughter became jeopardized. They dispatched a covert communicator to Shaddam, insinuating that Leto possessed knowledge of Project Amal and intended to reveal it during an extensive Landsraad trial, an act which would coerce Shaddam to abdicate the throne. To preempt this, Shaddam made an unprecedented personal appearance at the outset of Leto's trial, insisting upon his cousin's acquittal. In a symbolic gesture of loyalty, he presented Leto with the Emperor's Blade, a treasured artifact of House Carino. This act not only solidified Shaddam's political position, but also subtly acknowledged the intricate web of alliances and enmities that underpinned the galactic power structure. Recognizing the peril that had befallen Leto Atreides and the necessity to maintain surveillance over the soon-to-be emperor, the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood orchestrated a strategic marital alliance for Shaddam Karino IV. Margot Rashina Zaya, a Bene Gesserit adept with a specialization in eidetic memory, influenced Hasimir Fenri to promote the union between Shaddam and Anurul Sadao Tonkin, a sister of concealed prestige within the Sisterhood. Cognizant of the political leverage this marriage would confer upon Shaddam, Fenring persuaded him to wed the esteemed Reverend Mother. The nuptials coincided with Shaddam's coronation, unbeknownst to him that Anurul bore the clandestine title of Kwisatz Mother, with the intention of bearing only daughters to the Emperor, as part of the Sisterhood's long-range genetic program. The matrimonial alliance yielded five daughters, each with their distinct destiny within the Carino dynasty and the broader Galactic Empire. Irulan Carino, as the progeny of Shaddam and Anurul, assumed the role of Imperial Crown Princess, becoming the primary heiress to the Golden Lion throne. Chalice Carino, their second daughter, whose life came to an abrupt and unexpected end either on Kai Tan or Seleucus Secundus. When Sikia Carino, the third in line, later ascended to the position of sovereign co-regent within the Carino hierarchy. Josepha Carino, the fourth daughter, was inducted into the Bene Gesserit as a truthsayer, serving the Landsraad with her abilities. Rugi Carino, the youngest and fifth daughter, earned the title of the last princess to hail directly from the Carino imperial lineage. This strategic matrimony, while appearing to be a consolidation of power for Shaddam, in essence furthered the Bene Gesserit's shadowy agenda, ensuring their influence over the imperial throne through a lineage of daughters trained and aligned with the sisterhood's objectives. In the year 10156 after Guild, Shaddam Carino IV found himself ensnared in a web of political instability and personal crises. The passing of his father, accompanied by the public rebuke delivered by Duke Leto Atreides before the Landsraad, and the consequential display of submission during Leto's trial, sowed the seeds of distrust and apprehension within Shaddam. This cascade of events ignited a burgeoning paranoia towards his longtime confidant, Hazimir Fenring, as Shaddam began to perceive Fenring's deep involvement in imperial affairs as overbearing and diminishing his own authority. Compounded by a perceived condescension from Fenring, Shaddam's decision-making was clouded by a surge of insecurity. In a decision marked by its impulsivity rather than foresight, Shaddam assigned Fenring the role of Spice Minister on the desert planet of Arrakis, a position of considerable power, yet one that conveniently distanced him from the Imperial Court. This maneuver necessitated that Fenring and his wife Margot relocate to the unforgiving environs of Arrakis, a move that not only removed the perceived rival from the immediacy of the throne, but also isolated him in the treacherous political landscape of the spice-rich world. Many elements of the Imperium believe they hold the ultimate power, the Spacing Guild with their monopoly on interstellar travel, Coem with its economic stranglehold, the Bene Gesserit with their secrets, the Mentats with their control of mental processes, House Carino with their throne, the great and minor houses of the Landsraad with their extensive holdings. Woe to us on the day that one of those factions decides to prove the point. In the complex tapestry of interstellar politics depicted by Frank Herbert, the Padisha Emperor executed a strategy of war against noble houses hoarding illicit spice under the guise of legal retribution. His ulterior motive, however, was to undermine any potential opposition to Project Amal, which was nearing the completion of its goal to create synthetic melange. In a display of might meant to solidify his power, Shaddam amassed a formidable Sardaukar armada on the brink of decimating Arrakis, the linchpin of natural spice production. 
This aggressive posturing was abruptly curtailed by the Spacing Guild's strategic withdrawal of their Highliner services, a move that cornered the Emperor by stranding him and his military might. This maneuver by the Guild forced Shaddam to capitulate swiftly, resulting in a humiliating concession to their demands. The aftermath of this conflict, known as the Great Spice War, substantially eroded Shaddam's authority. Consequently, he found himself encumbered with advisors from Coem, the Spacing Guild, and the Landsraad, while witnessing the deterioration of confidence among his own elite Sardaukar. Amidst this political turmoil, the clandestine demise of Anurul Sadao Tonkin, his Bene Gesserit consort, occurred at the hands of Peter de Vries, a Harkonnen mentat in 10177 AG. The official narrative omitted the circumstances of her death and the covert rescue of the infant Paul Atreides that she facilitated. Shadan, whose sentiments towards Anurul were marred by frustration over her inability to produce a male heir, did not grieve her passing. Instead, he orchestrated an opulent funeral, more for appearances than out of sorrow. In the end, the true nature of Anurul's death remained obscured from the galaxy, with only Reverend Mother Mohim privy to the near-complete account, which she kept to herself. A dozen years subsequent to the tumultuous events that had strained his standing among the nobility, Emperor Shaddam Karina IV orchestrated a resurgence of esteem within the Landsraad through his strategic union with Ferenza Thorvald of House Thorvald. This marriage, which aligned with the desires of both the Landsraad and the Emperor for a male successor to the throne, was met with a favorable reception, signifying a potential consolidation of his power and lineage. Concurrently, the ancient enmity between House Ikaus and House Moritani escalated beyond the confines of Vendetta into overt military conflict. This escalation was dramatically punctuated by the assassination attempt by Viscount Hondru Moritani, which resulted in the tragic death of Elisa Ikaus during her nuptials with Duke Leto I. This heinous act incited the wrath of House Ikaz's patriarch, Armand, who, along with their allies House Atreides, commenced preparations for an all-out retaliation, further entangling the Emperor in the intricate web of noble warfare and galactic politics. In the climactic moment of the Grunman conflict, as the allied forces of Ikaz and Atreides advanced triumphantly towards the venerable capital of Ritka, Emperor Shaddam Karino emerged on the scene, adopting the mantle of a cosmic mediator to impose the mandate of the Landsraad. Descending upon the arid outskirts of Ritka's bastion, the Emperor convened a council of war's key figures to broker a cessation of hostilities, summoning the beleaguered Mauritani to the negotiation table on the embattled plain. Amidst this assembly, Mauritani, seizing a moment of high drama, proclaimed his lineage from House Tantor, infamously known for its historic atrocity against Seleucus Secundus. An astonished Shaddam queried the relevance of such a declaration to their current strife, to which Mauritani unveiled a dire threat. Ritka was a landmine of atomic armaments, primed to annihilate the leadership of House Carino, Atreides, and Ikaz. Yet unbeknownst to Mauritani, his swordmaster, Hitch Ressa, had forborne from arming the devices, opting against a cataclysm that would plunge the Imperium into chaos. The Emperor swiftly decreed Mauritani's arrest, demanding his presence before the Landsraad on Kaitain to divulge the entirety of his machination and expose any covert alliances with shadowed houses. There it was revealed that House Harkonnen, under Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, had played the role of furtive benefactor, having previously dispatched assassins against the Atreides heir on Caladan, and surreptitiously reinforced Mauritani's forces with Glossu Raban and a clandestine legion on Ritka's contested grounds. In a sinister twist, to obscure his illicit interventions, the Baron orchestrated Mauritani's demise through a sabotage that resulted in a fatal decompression of Mauritani's space vessel within the confines of the Guild Highliner, silencing the Viscount and safeguarding the Baron's secrets from the prying eyes of the galaxy. I am Paul Mordiva Trades, Duke of Arrakis! He who can destroy a thing has the real control of it. The twilight years of Shaddam Karino's reign were marked by the diminishing glory of House Karino, culminating in their displacement from the Imperial throne following the uprising on Arrakis. The eras spanning from 10,156 AG to 10,172 AG saw a notable expansion in the ranks of the Berseks, while the period between 10,163 AG and 10,193 AG was characterized by a progressive decline in the provisions allocated for Sardauka training. The precipitous decline of Shaddam and House Carino's dominion was catalyzed by the Emperor's own actions, rooted in his perceived threat from his adoptive cousin, Leto I. Leto's reputation had been significantly bolstered during the Great Spice War through his support to embattled planets and his valiant alliance with House Ikaz in the War of Assassins. 
His leadership qualities and sense of honor resonated with the nobility of the Landsraad, cementing his status as a figure of charismatic integrity. Adding to his formidable stature, Leto had effectively marshaled a formidable force under the tutelage of Thufa Hawat, Gurney Halleck, and Duncan Idaho. This army had demonstrated its prowess, rivaling even the Sardaukar during the liberation of Ix and the confrontations on Grunman. In response to this growing threat, Shadam clandestinely aligned with Baron Vladimir Harkonnen of House Harkonnen, orchestrating a scheme to annihilate House Atreides. But in a complex twist of loyalties, Shadam had actually harbored a private admiration for Leto, lamenting to his daughter Uralan the political demands that necessitated their rivalry. Shadam's hidden desire for a different political landscape was evident in his wish for Uralan to have been of age to wed Leto, recognizing not only Leto's virtue and the loyalty he commanded, but also his potential as an ideal successor, given the absence of a direct male heir from Shadam. Despite this concealed esteem for Leto, Shadam imposed upon him the relinquishment of Caladan to Count Hazemir Fenring, compelling Leto to assume control over the spice-rich desert planet of Arrakis. In the year 10191 AG, House Atreides dutifully took charge of Arrakis, setting the stage for the eventual seismic shifts that would reshape the political landscape of the known universe. In the shadows of Arrakis lie many secrets, but the darkest of them all may remain the end of House Atreides. In the aftermath of House Atreides' ascension to the stewardship of Arrakis, their tenure was abruptly curtailed by a devastating offensive, a secret collaboration between Sardaukar troops and Harkonnen forces. The assault decimated Leto's army, leading to his and the majority of his army's demise. In the wake of this covert operation, Emperor Shaddam IV perceived the obliteration of House Atreides as complete, effectively neutralizing a formidable rival. But contrary to the Emperor's calculations, Lady Jessica and her son Paul Atreides eluded death. They found refuge among the native Fremen of Arrakis, whose culture and combat proficiency they swiftly adopted. Their integration into Fremen society was not merely as survivors, but as emergent leaders, wielding their skills to ascend to positions of significant influence. By 10,193 AG, Paul, now revered as the young duke among the Fremen, orchestrated a campaign that culminated in a decisive victory over both Harkonnen and Sardauka contingents on the desert planet. This triumph had profound implications. It disrupted the flow of melange, the pivotal spice essential for space travel and a cornerstone of interstellar economy and politics. The resultant embargo on the spice supply enforced by Paul and the Fremen compelled Shaddam IV to abdicate the throne, bringing an end to his four-decade sovereignty. More consequentially, it terminated the 10 millennia long imperial dominion of House Carino, ushering in a new epoch and a seismic shift in the power dynamics of the universe. In this way, the fall of House Garino from the pinnacle of power was emblematic of the fragility of dynastic rule in the face of unforeseen and transformative forces. Subsequent to the epic political upheavals, Shidan Carino IV found himself relegated to Seleucus Secundus, the ancestral seat of House Garino. Accompanied by his four youngest daughters and Count Hasimir Fenring, his diminished status was contrasted by the ascension of his daughter, Princess Uralan, to sovereign co-regent. Despite her title, though, the reins of power were firmly in the hands of her husband, Paul Atreides, who wielded the authority of emperor in all but name by 10,194 AG. In a bid to reassert his waning influence, Shaddam entrusted Bashar Zamgaran with the Emperor's Blade, a symbolic and literal instrument of assassination, intended for Count Fenring to eliminate Paul. The assassination attempt, however, transpired in futility four years later. Amidst these machinations, 10,198 AG marked the arrival of Shaddam's grandson, Faradin Karino. The domestic tranquility of this event was marred when Shaddam ordered the termination of Bashar Garan upon uncovering his illicit trade of Karino valuables. In a further attempt to maintain a semblance of dynastic presence, Shaddam dispatched his daughter Rugi as an envoy to the Great Surrender Ceremony on Arrakis. Unfortunately, her mission tragically ended in fatality due to a hunter-seeker attack. The Almanac and Rishaf, the chronicler of record, erroneously recorded Shaddam's demise in 10,202 AG at age 68, an inaccuracy as he was verifiably active in 10,205 AG, conducting Sardaukar military exercises on Seleucus Secundus. Shaddam's presence actually persisted through 10,207 AG, evidenced by strategic marriage proposals intended to link his lineage with the ruling Atreides once Paul Atreides embarked into the desert, an act synonymous with self-imposed exile and death. During this interval, Shaddam, with Count Fenring's assistance, orchestrated the formation of an extensive Golar army. The force was designed as a tool for Shaddam's ambition to reclaim imperial dominion from Muad'Dib. 
Despite his efforts, however, his campaign to restore House Carino to its former glory did not come to fruition. While there is no fixed date provided to us, the once emperor met his own end between 10,207 AG and 10,217 AG, closing the chapter on his fraught and complex legacy. His life and reign were ultimately marked by tumultuous changes that left indelible imprints on the socio-political fabric of the galaxy. His passing closed a significant chapter in the history of the known universe, one characterized by both Zenith and Nadir of House Carino's power. In the aftermath of his death, the once glorious house found itself grappling with the loss of their imperial stature, a decline precipitated by the Emperor's own machinations and the inexorable rise of House Atreides. In the end, his own actions set in motion the forces that would ultimately topple his dynasty and catalyze the ascendancy of House Atreides under Paul Muad'Dib. The galaxy witnessed a paradigm shift as the Fremen of Arrakis, bolstered by Atreides' leadership, emerged as a formidable power, eclipsing the Sardaukas' feared reputation and changing the course of Melange trade forever. Despite their fall from the Imperial throne, though, House Carino did not vanish into the annals of history. The bloodline continued through Shaddam's progeny, with his grandson, Faradun Carino, notably integrating into House Atreides as the consort of Padisha Empress Ganima Atreides, ensuring that the Carino lineage endured within the new ruling dynasty. This infusion of Carino blood into House Atreides symbolized the subtle yet potent continuance of Shaddam's influence. In the grand tapestry of galactic events, the saga of House Carino under Shaddam's rule serves as a poignant reminder of the impermanence of power and the shifting sands of allegiance. Shaddam's life, fraught with political gambits and personal contradictions, mirrored the very essence of the empire he ruled, resilient yet fragile, formidable yet vulnerable. His death marked not just an end of an era, but also set the stage for the reconfiguration of power structures within the galaxy, underscoring the profound impact one ruler's life can have on the destiny of an entire civilization. Dune is the story of the Atreides family that falls into the trap set by the Emperor, who is getting more and more jealous of their growing popularity. Paul Atreides is the son of Duke Leto, and he's the future of House Atreides. He's a young man who's facing extraordinary circumstance, trying to navigate it with integrity within the tradition of House Atreides. It's very easy to get lost into the concepts, into the scale. But at the end of the day, it's very powerful and complex story. With that said, that's all for today, folks. A huge thanks to everyone that requested we explore Shaddam Carino IV, the last emperor of the Carino Empire. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and check out the film Comics Explain podcast on the second channel. And if there's anything else you'd like for me to cover, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. This prophecy is how they enslave us! It's not a prophecy. It's a story. I don't care what you believe, I believe. Look who's back from the dead. May thy knife chip and shatter.